Hi, in this video I would like to show you what you can get by using the RDM panel inside Luminet Monitor application coupled with Luminex Lumi Split. As you can see here, I have one Lumi Split 1.6 connected to port 3. This is the Lumi Split 1.6 connected to port 3 of the converter and two Lumi Split 2.10 connected to port 1 and 2. In fact, as the Lumi Split offers two input, the two devices are seen as separate devices, but in fact they are one physical device. But if you are planning to use the limit split in a backup mode, and if in the unlikely event you lose DMX on input A, you might wish to still continue monitoring the device through input B. This is why we have two RDM responder per splitter. If you hover the mouse over the device, you will see that the device offers you 13 sensors and 8 mode. Right now the splitter is using mode 1, which is a splitter mode, and the, lock, the front panel is not locked. If you select the Lumi split and right click on it, you can clear the device if, if needed, identify the device. Right now all LEDs are flashing white. I can do exactly the same with the 1.6. This is very useful when you are using a rack with lots of splitters inside and you can press the identification simply by clicking on the identify off button. You can get messages from the, from the splitter itself. Right now there is no messages but the splitter can inform you if you have reload a preset. Uh, if there is a problem on the button the splitter would do a checkup at uh, startup and several other messages like this. You can refresh the RDM status of the device. You can select from here the personality. I invite you to check the uh, specification of the limit split to see how the, the kind of application you can achieve with it. The display level, you can set the LEDs to the lowest value or to the highest value. This can be very handy if, for instance, you are using the splitter into a very dark environment and you don't want to see uh, parasite lighting. Or if you are into an outdoor festival and you really need to see your LED, you will put the, the uh, value of the LED at full. Don't expect to be able to fade between the lowest and the highest value. It's either the lowest, either the highest. You can reset the device from there as well. You can lock or unlock the front panel from here. And, and this is great, you can upgrade the firmware directly from the network. Of course, to do that, you will need to have the Lumi Split connected to a Luminex Ethernet DMX converter. This is Modato. And if you're planning to upgrade a lot of devices together, the good thing is that you can connect them all to one Luminex node and tick the old button, select the file, and press the upgrade. And all devices will be upgraded at once. This will be a big time saver for you. Luminex right now is the only company in the world who is able to upgrade its splitter through RDM. And you can also mail the status of the device. If you right click and select the control panel, you will get access to more advanced information. Here on the info tab, you retrieve exactly the same info and the in, inside, as inside the RDM device panel. If you see a get button, this means you can get the information from the device. And if you see a set button, this means you can set this information to the device. From the DMX tab, you can select the operating mode as a splitter backup, as explained before, and you can recall preset that you have saved previously. There, you can get access to the sensor's information, so you can see the temperature sensor, and you can see the sensor behind each DC-DC converter. If the DC-DC uh, display a value of 1, this means the DC-DC converter is in a good operational mode. If you see a value of 0, this means the DC-DC converter is dead. You have one DC-DC converter per input and per output. On the display, you can set, as explained before, a value of 0 or 255 to get the lowest value or the highest value. 
From there, into the custom uh, tab, you can store a user preset. On the Lumi split, you can store a uh, Lumi split 2.10, you can store a preset on outlet 9 and 10, and on a 1.6, you can store a preset on outlet 5 and 6. Which means if you want to store a preset into the first available outlet, it will be the first one. On the on the two point, it will be outlet nine. On the limit split, uh, one point six, it would be outlet five. So you just select the first or the second outlet and press set. This is how to record a preset. If you are using the limit split two point ten in a backup mode. And in the unlikely event you lose DMX on input A, the splitter will go automatically to input B. However, if DMX is back available on input A, the splitter will not go back automatically to A. You will have either to press on the A button on the front panel or send an RDM command to the splitter to go back to A. The endpoint menu offers you a view on the two inputs, input A and input B, and the 10 output. By default, all output are assigned to input A, which is, from the splitter perspective, universe 1. And input B is seen as universe 2. This has nothing to see with RPET or streaming universes. Huh? It's just universe 1 for input A, universe 2 for input B. If you wish to change the assignation of one output to either A or B, simply select one or two. Here I've just set outlet seven to go into input B. You can do it for several outlets if needed. Per zone, you can enable or disable RDM. Just apply the filter on input A, and all associated output will turn cyan instead of deep blue. This means RDM is filtered on the output side. And you can do exactly the same for input B. Then they all turn orange instead of red. You can also select the speed. If you want to use the splitter in a regeneration mode and regenerate the, the, the DMX output, you can directly select here the kind of speed you wish. You can also filter per port if needed. Let's say I want to filter on port 7 and 6. Port 7 and 6 will now turn orange, which means only DMX will be output onto those connectors. And you can do the same with ports associated to zone A. They now turn cyan as well. As I explained previously, we know from the RDM panel that the Robin spiders are connected on port 1 of the node. And we know that the limit split is connected on port 1 as well. So we can guess that those fixtures are connected to the limit split but we don't know on which part of the, of the limit split. But thanks to the endpoint panel, there is a small arrow here next to port one. And if you expand this arrow, you will see and discover the Robin spider, which are connected on port one of the splitter, which is the case here. Which means I know that the ethernet DMX converter on port one has the limit split connected. And on port one of the limit split, I know my lighting fixture are daisy chained. If I move to port three, and if I wait for the next polling packet, I will see now that my moving light have moved to port three, which means I know a, the exact DMX signal path, which is absolutely fantastic for troubleshooting and maintenance purposes. Thanks for watching.